Thank you for joining us. I'm Kobe Marenko, the co-founder and uh, CEO of uh, Arbe. Arbe is a semiconductors company in the automotive space. Our product is a chipset that allows uh, building a full radar that can see the environment in any weather, any lighting condition, up to a very, very long range in an ultra high resolution. And by that becoming the complementary sensor for a camera for any kind of autonomous uh, and safety applications for automotive and uh, for uh, outside of automotive for robotics and few other uh, fields. Our base uh, publicly traded on the NASDAQ for the last four years through a spec merger. We are one 140 people, most of them in our R&D center in Israel. We have uh, sales and support in uh, Germany where we are supporting our German car manufacturers that starting collecting data for their uh, uh, next generation launch of uh, hands-free driving with our chipset. Office in Shanghai, where we are supporting our Chinese customers. Uh, we announced uh, um, uh, one uh, automotive client already that uh, will use our chipset uh, for uh, production in 26. And an office in the States that we are supporting uh, mainly Magna, that is our tier one for the US and uh, Europe. In China, we are working with uh, High Rain, publicly traded on Beijing, one of the largest uh, local tier ones there. We are partnering with NVIDIA. We announced this partnership in January. We are their uh, imaging radar partner, and uh, we showed uh, that uh, based on our sensor and the NVIDIA processor, we can actually generate a full free space mapping of the environment. It means that we are able to detect the entire area of the car up to 300 meter and to show to the car what is drivable and what is not. And as I mentioned, this is working uh, in any weather and uh, any lighting condition. We have a $40 million pipeline, mainly from China, uh, that will start uh, delivered by the end of this year, ramping up in uh, 26, and revenues from Europe we expect to start in 27, and this will lead us uh, to, break, to break even. Uh, we have a very strong balance sheet, more than $70 million in the bank as uh, the end of Q1, which means that we have uh, more or less until the end of 27 of operation without any revenues, uh, but we expect to be break even in the middle of uh, 27. So uh, our cash position is very good. Arbe is a semiconductors company and uh, this is our core competence. All of our IP is on silicon, uh, more than 15 patents. This is something uh, that uh, no company uh, can really uh, compete with. So, as I mentioned, we have a one OEM that already selected us for production. Two leading European OEMs use our chipset for uh, data collection, which is the last stage before <coughs> announcing uh, uh, production worthy of this uh, radar and also one large Japanese uh, customer. We were selected for uh, a heavy machinery project with high rain in China for FAW trucks and one large European uh, truck manufacturer also selected our chipset for the next generation of, uh, of trucks. So basically uh, the problem that we are solving uh, is uh, basically in this picture. So any one of us that was driving the highway uh, in a, uh, maybe in a fog, maybe in a rain, maybe just in a dark night when there's no lights around, understand that in order to have a real safe driving, uh, especially when the ends are not on the wheel, and in the next stage, the eyes are uh, on the mobile phone, you need a sensor that can actually see the environment in any weather and any lighting condition. And this is what we are doing. Uh, so it's not just about seeing the car that's coming in front of you. It's also seeing small objects on the road, like a tire that fell out of a truck on the highway. And it's there, and it's... Uh, 
maybe uh, uh, on the middle of the road, maybe it's on the side of the road, just uh, half a meter of him is on the road, but you need to avoid it because uh, hitting this tire uh, would cause uh, a fatal accident. And uh, no camera in the world, uh, at least not a regular camera, maybe a military camera, can see this, uh, but any no 8 megapixel, 16 megapixel, no camera can see this object on the road in 160 meter, which is the, 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 uh, what is needed in order to have a safe break and a comfortable braking, not in a crash mode, and of course, not to hit it uh, like uh, it happens today. So uh, basically, radar exists in cars for more than 20 years. Uh, if you're hearing the beep when someone is crossing your car, this is a radar. This is a very low-end radar that can detect if there is something or not. The next generation, what, what we are coming with, is an imaging radar, a radar that actually showing an image, a point cloud, like a camera, uh, and not just saying if there is something there or not. So uh, we see... Uh, imaging radar getting into cars from this year and ramping up towards the end of the decade based on uh, the applications of hands-free driving and eyes of driving from uh, one hand and from the other hand, safety. Uh, the NHTSA, the regulation in the States, basically forcing all of the car manufacturers from year model 29, uh, sorry, which means cars that will get into the market in, by the end of 28 will need to have active braking system in any weather, any lighting condition. And this braking system needs to see a child jumping to the road in 50 meters, bicycles mer merging into your lane, and many other uh, missions that our radar is the only radar that is capable of preventing a fatal accident for that in 29. And in Europe, it's going to be in 2030. So, so there is basically two trends that pushing imaging radar into the market. One is the need for a new revenue stream coming from hands-free driving, eyes of driving, uh, that the car manufacturers ho hope uh, that the customers will pay for that an extra. And uh, from the other end, uh, the active safety. In terms of competition, so basically, uh, as, I, as I showed uh, earlier, there is around 100 million radar chipsets that sold uh, already into cars. It's few billions or two or three billion dollars of market that exist, controlled by NXP and TI as the in-combat companies that are doing the legacy radar. On the next generation of the radar, there were around 10 startups that starting this journey almost 10 years ago. We were the only one to survive. And uh, uh, from uh, the legacy companies, Mobileye, that is one of the leaders in, in uh, camera-based solutions, also developed a radar in the scale of what we are doing. So today, our competition is mainly Mobileye for the high-end uh, uh, imaging uh, radar. So. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a chipset, so it's three chips, a radar transmitter, radar receiver, and our core IP is our processor. It's a dedicated processor, very strong processor with uh, a very big uh, uh, ability, a very, uh, an ability to process uh, uh, more than 2,000 channels simultaneously which is what is needed to create a real picture of the environment, is based on core patterns that, uh, uh, that we have, and we believe uh, that uh, this is uh, our core competence that will take us also for the next generation uh, chipset that we already started working uh, on that. In radar, the amount of channels is like in camera, the pixels. So the multiple of the transmitters and the receivers this is the amount of channels, and this is like in camera, the pixels. So our radar has a 2,300 uh, pixels. Mobileye has something in the same scale, uh, 1,500. The current radars that exist in the market based on TI's chipset and, and, uh, and NXP has uh, 
has order of magnitude lower amount uh, of channels. And this is what is really needed to see these small objects on the road on uh, so far as we are able uh, to see it. Uh, so the result of it is what we call free space mapping. The green area that you see here on the picture is uh, the AI output that is generated on the NVIDIA central processor based on the point cloud of our radar. So uh, on the left side, you see the point cloud that is coming out of the radar. And this is the AI stack uh, of the central compute that basically showing the car what is drivable and what is not, where they can go and where not. And uh, this is done only with, uh, uh, with our radar. Uh, our imaging radar today uh, and Mobileye are the only radars in the market that can actually uh, generate this free space mapping that is needed for uh, hands-free driving. Uh, so this is basically the competition, uh, Mobileye. Uh, <coughs> uh, we believe that our uh, solution is much better in terms of uh, price and in terms of power consumption, which is uh, very uh, important, especially when you're going to EVs and you don't want that uh, the radar will kill your battery. So our base uh, tier two, we are selling chips uh, to, uh, the, to the car manufacturers from one hand, but the car manufacturers bringing to the market also a tier one. Magna is our main tier one uh, in Europe and US. The tier one takes the chipset and our reference design and build a full radar model out of it produce it in millions of units, qualify it, and gives uh, the OEM the warranty and whatever they need in order uh, to buy uh, this uh, piece of uh, uh, technology. But the contracts uh, are, uh, part of the contracts are, are directly with the car manufacturer. So for example, VW, basically buying our chips and telling Magna, please use the Arba chipset and build for us uh, uh, hundreds or millions of units uh, with uh, uh, this uh, chipset. So Arbe reached to the in uh, Q1 to the position that we're starting producing chips and test them in uh, in full uh, production. And by Q2 this year we will start delivering chips in full uh, mass production to our customers, ramping up of revenues by uh, 26. We expect a few millions of uh, dollars revenues this year and uh, to pass the 15, 20 million dollar uh, next year. Uh, we are today in final stages of selection for uh, programs uh, with all of the leading uh, OEMs, around 10 different uh, selections that expected to be closed this year that present uh, something like 7 million units uh, of radars per year. We are selling chipset in uh, $80 per chipset with uh, 55 to 60% gross margin. So uh, basically, it's a, a potential of $300 million in revenues by the end of uh, this decade, mainly coming first from China and Europe, and later on uh, from the States. We expect break even based on our Chinese customers uh, and uh, uh, ramping up of revenues in Europe by the end of 26, early 27, as a, and as I mentioned, our cash balance can take us uh, much, much longer uh, than that. Uh, the team is uh, very experienced in automotive, in algorithms, and in, uh, in, the, uh, in the public sector, and uh, this is our leadership. So basically, we have uh, all of our partners have a B sample, which means they are production ready. The chips are uh, there and early revenues are coming from the fast growing automotive market uh, in China. We are in the final stages of selection with 40% of the automotive market. And radar is the only solution for safe hands-free driving. Also worth mentioning that uh, we have some non-automotive applications that uh, we believe will generate for, ma for us five to ten million dollars a year. It's nice, it's uh, helping us uh, uh, finalizing and uh, the, the, the software and uh, everything around, but basically Arbe 
is about automotive. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, I, I mentioned trucks, so where we have a project with uh, one of the leading trucks manufacturer in, uh, in Europe. The problem with commercial vehicle uh, basically is that it's a lot of work for customization and the volume is lower, but it's nice. The margins are better. So, so you said like Tesla, but there is only one company in the world that is not using radar in their uh, vehicle, which is uh, Tesla. I think that uh, camera and especially the Tesla AI stack is amazing. So the job that they did with uh, 10 uh, cameras uh, is something in, in, in all of the tests showing that something like 98.2 of the time you can drive just with the camera. The only problem is that in the 1.8% that is left, you're killing people. So uh, without that, if the, if the public will allow Tesla to have to kill people, less, by the way, than human being, Tesla is great. But if you want a solution that will be 100% safe, camera is not enough. Uh, I know that once uh, Elon Musk said that uh, the human driving only with his eyes, and he's right, the human driving only with his eyes, but he kills 100,000 people every year with his eyes. Sorry. Uh, so, so actually, uh, retrofit cars is, is uh, not yet uh, common for, for those kinds of services. We believe that it's going to be better margins. Uh, earlier, end of in uh, China in 26, Europe uh, 27, we believe US uh, 28. No. No, f fully autonomous right now is more of a hobby uh, of uh, Waymo uh, that's burning billions of dollars around it. There's no yet business for that. <coughs> We believe that it's going to be for level three, uh, what is called level three. I think today there is, in the market, you're talking about <coughs> a functionality and not level of autonomy. So there is hands-free driving on the highway, which means that you can, you, sh you still need to stay tuned, but you can leave the wheel. And then the next phase, the real phase is eyes off. So. You can actually watch videos on your uh, mobile phone and the car might ask you to take control and the car assume that there is five to 10 seconds until uh, you will do it. And this is, I believe, gonna be the mainstream uh, in cars in 2030. And this is uh, our holy grail. It's going to be ready earlier, but until it will be adopted, then until uh, you know it will, the the prices will get to a point that uh, it will be affordable at least on 15 or 20 percent of the cars. We believe it's 2030. Yeah. 